Concert visuals have changed quite a bit in recent years, and the new trend being these really big, very interesting elaborate scenes that kind of play throughout the song, rather than having sort of more basic or interesting aesthetic scenes where they cut quick and have more minimal design to them. So what I'm going to do today is show you how I would tackle an animation like that for a client or for maybe my own show. So here's the plan. I'm going to be designing one main animation that will set the tone for the rest of the animations. All of the other supporting animations will either be reformatting or stripped down versions of the original big clip. So let's get into my process. I'm remaking a design I did about two years ago. I just kind of wanted an excuse to remake it entirely in geometry nodes. All right, so I have these cylinders here on an icosphere, and I'm just going to go ahead and displace them a little bit. All right, now what I want to do is just go ahead and decimate kind of what I already have now to give it that network look that I want. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit and just kind of decimate it a little bit to get that triangulated look. Now what I need to do is create a wireframe system here to give it that look that I'm looking for. There we have it. We have our initial structure. Got a simple instance on points, and then we're going to go get a icosphere here. Plug that and then bring the radius down significantly. And then what we can do is use a noise texture to control randomness within this network to really give it an organic look that I'm looking for. So this is super nice. All right, here we have it. In terms of the grand scheme of the design, this is the main modeling. Now for the lighting, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to have one, you know, slight desaturated green right here just to add some reflections to the scene and then I'm also going to add one behind the object as sort of a focal point highlight and that one is going to be a bit darker than the brighter one over here. So now we have some nice dynamic lighting hitting this thing. I need to put some materials on it. So any good design is a good focal point. So on the emission of the big sphere in the middle, we're just going to add a layer weight effect to it. So it's going to give it this ring and then we can just pump the brightness up and you get this really cool ring light looking effect. And to me, that just says cool sci-fi. I'm a big fan of it. I'm going to go ahead and give all the spheres the same exact treatment. So we're just going to throw that color onto the spheres and just do something like this. Now, I don't want all of the spheres to have bright lights. So I'm going to throw a object info and a noise texture into a mix. And that is going to allow me to randomly pick, you know, which ones are going to glow. So we just pull it in like this, and then you can play with the W on the noise texture to kind of get them to dance around, you know, like it's Christmas or whatever. Just have some really cool animation opportunities with this effect and not all of them being, um, you know, illuminated really helps a balance of highlights. Now I'm skipping a lot of the nitty gritty steps it took to make this animation. I'm uploading this step-by-step -step tutorial next week here on YouTube, but if you want access to that now, that is available on Patreon along with all the other step-by-step -step tutorials that you're going to see in this video. I've been posting a ton of really cool big projects. Last month I uploaded the album cover project and the step-by-step -step of how I created that. The Music Visualizer project, which is a really big one, lots of content. I've already uploaded several hours of content this year already on the Patreon for tutorials, step-by-step -step guides, tips and tricks, tons of really cool stuff on my Patreon. If you want to check that out, that is going to be linked in the description. Now let's get back to it. All right, so the, the scene is feeling a little empty, so I'm going to go ahead and add some hair to the scene, and then I need to shape it really quick. So you can just get a simple turbulence force field and you can play with the strength of that until you kind of like, you know, how the hair looks kind of flowing through. And then I just want to make it a little bit longer so I don't see the end of the hair in the camera. And now we have a really nice looking scene. So last thing this scene needs is a little bit of compositing effects. So first we're going to get a lens distortion. I'm going to turn on jitter and then make it maybe 0.01 and that's going to add a bit of noisiness to the scene to give it a little bit of just a little bit of grit which I really love you can see the noise really take place in the bloom uh, in the glowing areas I love the way that looks and then we're going to throw some glare on it but we are going to use ghosts I'm going to bring that color mod up and then play with my mix until I kind of like the opacity that I'm getting and then that threshold is going to help me a little bit as well just get a really interesting composite 
effect on this scene. So something, I think something like this, I think looks really nice and just makes it look a little bit more just sci-fi and cool and weird. All right, so the scene is finished. All I had to do was animate the lights blinking around in the shader, animate the object moving around and the camera zooming in and out. Very simple stuff, but really makes a world of a difference of making this scene feel alive. So now that it's done, we can really go forward and start stripping this down and reformatting it for new animations that that feel like they're in the family of this main design. Now I'm gonna start working on the related clips that are in the same family of the main clip so you can have some variety during your show. Um, my first idea is to reformat, which pretty much means I'm gonna take all the assets that you can see in the main animation and just do them differently. So reformat the shape, reformat the direction, maybe the camera movement, but just something that looks like essentially it's sibling, but not the same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a cylinder, and my idea is to run a camera through a cylinder with the whole wireframe system as the reformat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat really everything that I did, just displacing the whole tube like I did in the original, decimating the geometry to get that wireframe uh, set up, and then actually creating the wireframe. I'm gonna go ahead and instance uh, the spheres and all the points like the original ones, but these are gonna be bigger than they were on the other one. You know, I am going to add random scale, but they are gonna just be more pronounced uh, because these are gonna create more light in the scene. I'm going to use my classic looping trick and just create a bunch of instances of this so that the camera can actually animate down the line uh, to create this loop. I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna give myself quite a few frames. I'm gonna give my, in this case, 450, because I want this camera to rotate, but I don't want it to be super fast. So the staple of the first one was very much that circular focal point in the middle. I'm gonna add that to this one here as well, parent it to the camera, and then you can just kind of say, all right, this is, uh, this will work. Quite literally, everything is going to stay the same. So each thing is gonna have the same materials with the glowing and the kind of the variables with that. The lighting is also going to stay the same. Um, it's a different here, but the lighting is gonna mimic generally what we had in the original one and uh, just keeping it the same, just reformat it. All right, so this is now finished as this version of the reformat. So I saved this one and what I wanna do now is create a slightly different version of this but sped up. So first I'm just gonna go ahead and make the camera angle much, much wider and that's gonna kind of speed it up but I'm gonna go ahead and bring the camera farther to make it faster. So here we go, this is a very, very fast version of the one we just created. You never know what your client's gonna want, so offering you know slightly different versions of something you've already made gives you know really creative opportunities. So this is our third animation. For the remainder of these animations, I want to take just specific simple assets from the main animation, single them out, and make an animation with just those. So they'll be very, more minimal, more simple animations, but still work in the family of what I'm trying to create. So to me, the wireframe is a perfect start for just pulling an asset. So we're just gonna make an animation with just the wireframe idea. And the easiest thing I think is just to kind of pull, take this animation and delete some stuff because I still want the camera running through it. Um, so we can just go ahead and delete all the spheres and just focus on having the wireframe. So I'm gonna make you know less of the wires here and I'm gonna make them considerably thicker so that we can you know have them as the main focal point. This looks really cool, so we can work with this. Now this looks kind of cool, but I wanna have you know some glowing elements rather than just metallic and green and foggy light. So I'm gonna throw a noise texture onto this and then just kind of use that as some places to add something that's bright and glowing, but still, you know, is simple enough and we can travel through it. And so now we have something, something pretty cool. We can make it brighter for those compositing effects. So this looks really, really nice. Now I have an idea that I've really never done to a, a point that I liked it. Um, so I'm gonna take my camera and then on the clip end, I'm just gonna bring it so that so that we can limit how far this camera can see. So you can see how it's, let's bring it to zero and bring it up. It kind of builds and so it would inherently 
Yeah, so we inherently kind of create this building animation with all the wires. And then maybe I can give myself a few more wires here to make that animation a little bit more obvious. So you can see it's making this really cool building effect, very subtle, but you can see things growing. Um, this, this is a finished piece right here. This is really cool. We have these really beautiful compositing effects. I love this one. I'm such a huge fan of this one. I think we add a little bit more glowing uh, so that we can see the building a little bit, you know, happening a little bit more obviously. Um, but this, this is cool. This was one of those happy accidents. I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of sick. So there we go. We are done with this one. We can just render it out. And then for the last one, I want to take those spheres that have the rings on them and just isolate that asset. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cube here and convert it into a volume. And then this is gonna allow you to instance spheres within the inside of the volume and not attached just to the edge of it. So that's gonna be a distribute points and volume node. And that, that's the trick right there. And you can run a camera through that. So let me get all my spheres here and then just run it through just like I did originally. And then with the compositing effects, with everything on, you get a really, really simple animation. I'm not even gonna rotate the camera. This would be something that's like meant to be simple, meant to be maybe a slow part or a lull or just stripped down and minimal version of everything we've been seeing so far and stays in the family of color, stays in the family of um, you know assets and movement and compositing effects. So they all marry together as this you know sibling animation. And there you have it, that is how I would design a collection of animation loops for live visuals. It's something that I love doing. It's most all of the client work I do is for concerts. So this is right in my alley of what I like to use Blender for. Um, but there you go, I hope you learned something. If you really liked this video and you wanna make more in this series, I would absolutely love to hear some feedback from you guys if you liked the format, if you liked this topic. Uh, but with that being said, again, check out the Patreon if you wanna learn how to create this. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.